29, right, Dan? Yep. Okay, we are recording. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the Focus on Customer Service podcast. We are here live for episode 29. And as always, I am joined by my British co-host, Dan Moriarty, the, the other part of D&D. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well, mate. How are you? I'm good. You like this live blab thing, don't you? I'm, it's growing on me. Uh, I, I enjoyed some of the random questions that we got from the audience in the last one and hoping for uh, some similar some similar audience participation in this one. Awesome. Well, we are very, very um, happy to uh, welcome Yaniv Mezjedi, who is the uh, Vice President of Marketing um, for a company called Nextiva. And uh, welcome, Yaniv, and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Hey, d and uh Thanks for having me. Uh, so Nextiva is a cloud communications company. Um, our core product is a cloud phone system. Essentially what we've done is we've taken that traditional, clunky, difficult to use, difficult to manage business phone system, simplified it, move it to the cloud, and you know, accessible to all businesses. And we serve businesses throughout the US. Fantastic, and tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you land there? So I've been at Nextiva since day one. Uh, the company, we acquired our first customer in May of 2008. Uh, no outside funding, no telecom experience um, in an industry that's you know, really led by traditional telecom companies. Um, not to knock T-Mobile, but you know, those traditionally you know, large telcos that um, have been quite notorious for bad customer experiences and just not the best technology being placed in the hands of the end users. And we felt like there was an opportunity to really disrupt that market. So we started in 2008, uh, fast forward seven years, we have well over 100,000 business, 100, business customers in the US, nearing 500 employees here in Scottsdale and a uh, fun atmosphere, fun company. And you know, but they, those hundred thousand businesses. I mean, are you guys going after big businesses, small businesses, medium businesses, all businesses? All businesses. We'll take you know any size customer. Um, we've seen you know, tremendous growth in all areas. I would say in the early days there was a lot of interest and growth with the smaller to mid-sized business, but today we see a, a great and a growing portion of our customer base in the enterprise. Cool, that makes sense. And, and obviously, um, you know, the podcast focus on customer service, all about social care and kind of how brands are doing it digitally now. Would love to hear a bit about, um, obviously, I mean, you guys, it's funny because it sounds like you're really enabling some of maybe the traditional care from a phone perspective. But from your guys' side, are you servicing those clients digitally? Are you offering them the social care? Yeah, so we're, I mean, social care is, of course, I mean, you have to be, However, your customers want customer service or want to speak to you, you have to be there. And that's an obvious and a given. Um, but for us, we're, I mean, first it starts with the people at the company. We're really passionate about, you know, having great people on our team. You spend so much time at work, you want to work with people that are awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really focus on building an environment, cultivating a culture that's, that's you know, full of great, creative, customer centric minds. Uh, for us, a big thing and uh, really what I enjoy talking about a lot is what we do from a video perspective as it relates to customer service. So um, one thing that we haven't seen too many companies take on, but we, we continue to do so and I've been doing it for about three years is this concept of customer service via Twitter, but a different take on it, which incorporates video. So we, uh, if you tweet at Nextiva, um, or post a Facebook, you know, post on our Facebook page, you'll more than likely get a response via video rather than text. And the main idea behind that is video builds bonds. And just like now, you know, I, it's been just a few minutes on this you know, blab together and I feel like I know you guys much more just through this video, this personal connection, this face-to-face. -face. So we try to take that onto social. And it's pretty cool. Talk us through that. So I'm, I'm a customer of yours. I, I tweet you. I say, hey, um, Nextiva, my uh, cloud communication phone system isn't working. Are you then 
seeing that? You're, you're grabbing a team, grabbing a camera, recording a personalized response, or are you working from a library? How does that all work? So how does that work today, or how does that work three years ago? Um, you know, so, so three years ago, it's today, and then three years from now. Okay, so three years ago, it was, you know, we'd get the Twitter notification. It was myself or another person, individual on our marketing team. We didn't have a video team. Uh, we just started the video team then. So uh, we would get, in that case, a, a smartphone and put that smartphone in front of, you know, <laughs> ideally the representative at Nextiva that's working or familiar with that account if it's an existing customer. If it's not, if there's no way to tie that person to someone at Nextiva, just whoever we can pull. And just get on camera, talk about, hey, Dan, what's going on? Well, how can we help you? Here are maybe you know ten things that you should look into, or one thing that you should look into um, that may help with your phone system. If not, um, you know, feel free to shoot us another message or give us a call. Um, but in many cases, we we try to be as prompt as possible and have a, a video instead of you know 140 characters. Mm -hmm. And you're sharing that video back publicly. Publicly, yeah. So. And then we post it on our YouTube page. Um, there's a channel just dedicated to it called Nextiva Cares. And the response is always awesome. I mean, you're not gonna get the most views. If you're, from a marketer's perspective, if you're trying to say, you know, how many views am I getting? You know, how's the engagement? In most cases, it's just a one-to-one -one conversation. But the loyalty, the impact that you are kind of creating with your brand and that individual, that potential or existing customer is tremendous. Um, and we've seen so many customers in some cases reply back with a video or uh, write about it, tell their friends about it. it it's fun. Um, today we have two video producers on staff, so we have better cameras, better lighting. Um, we're able to put on a, you know, in some cases, a, a better production. Um, but at the end of the day, speed is what matters most. Yeah. Um, as you guys know, it's, you know, when someone's reaching out to you with a question or a comment, they want to, they want an answer now, not 24 hours from now. So we have to be, we have to be prompt. So, so the people that are reaching out to you, are they, cause you're selling to businesses, so you're a sort of B2B, but is it the end consumer that's having the problem or is it the business contact? Oh, it's the business contact. So okay. it's the, the next Eva client. And at the end of the day, while it is B2B, I mean, they're still people. And of course. You know, so we, we want to treat them as you know, real people and how people want to interact. We don't want to be like, hey, call our toll-free number, wait in a queue, and you know, deal with customer service, which, by the way, I mean, I, I don't want to you know, go too far into what we do from a customer service standpoint, but we're just fanatical about amazing service and delivering just a great, exceptional customer service experience. But the... The point, I mean, we, we really try to just make it as human as possible. Well, we're fanatical about customer service here as well, so you can be as fanatical as you'd like. That's totally allowed on this podcast. Good to know. Uh, so, but, you know, I've talked with people who claim that, you know, you can't do social customer service for B2B. So, obviously, you guys are. So, how do you dispute that? How do you answer that? I mean, I, I would just say laziness. I mean, it, clearly your customers are talking to you. And obviously the scale of Nextiva relative to JetBlue, T-Mobile, or another brand is maybe not the same. But for the most part, from a B2B perspective, um, if someone's taking the time to speak to you, you should you know, reciprocate and try to respond as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in yeah, video has this cloud or you know, people are afraid of it, but... Just embrace it. You know, we we don't have people at Next Diva that went to you know film school and are great on in front of camera. But the more you do it, you get comfortable with it. People get comfortable in front of camera, and you know now our Next Diva cares. Ten second videos are much more impactful um, because we have literally almost five hundred people here that are always ready to jump on camera, and you know when you're coming to Next Diva that. You, you have to embrace video. So any of your employees can come on and, and answer a question? Yeah, yeah, and we, uh, we, try to, 
we try to get as many people as possible. Now, our, due to what goes on in a normal work day, you're not going to get, you know, uh, let's say someone on the customer service side or the sales side to be as readily available. And because speed is so important, we usually, you know, we always tend to have our video producer as the backup. You see him quite a bit on the next Diva Cares videos, but as much as possible, we try to get as many people involved and try to make it as fun and creative as possible. So, so because speed matters, which we, we thoroughly agree with, there's almost a, a tension there between speed and replying by video. What's your, so I, again, I, I tweet in as a customer, um, and by the way, I fully agree with, with your argument about B2B um, and the fact that they're humans, so that shouldn't really make any difference. Um, but I tweet in as a customer of yours, how long does it take me to get that personalized video response on average? I mean, we can pull, if you, like, I mean, we could test it right now, but I would say in most cases, I mean, if we're on, we can pull it, we could turn it around pretty quickly. In some cases, what we do is, it, like, if we realize that we can't get a video reply within the hour, what we do is just, you know, start with a text and then follow up with a video. But we really feel that there's a tremendous impact when you're, bringing in that video element. And we just see it, whether it's, you know, in a private message and it's not public, you're not, it's, we do this not for that like glory or that public recognition, but that, you know, one-to-one -one relationship that we build with the potential of existing customer and it's tremendous, but um, speed is most important. We, we try to see if we, we can pull it off within, you know, a reasonable amount of time, mm -hmm. minutes, but if not, we just, we go with text and follow up with video. So occasionally you are responding with a customized personal video within five minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll be ready. Oh, Dan, we've lost your sound. Sorry. There you go. You're back. Um, so, you know, talk, talk a bit more about process before the videos. So, like, who's the person monitoring Twitter, looking out for the notifications? Like, who's, who's the spark, I guess, inside your company that kicks the video process off? So... It's, there's a, it's myself as well as our marketing communications manager. Um, we, both of us tend to spend a lot of time watching social and just making sure that, I mean, we have the notifications coming in all the time. So we're always keeping an eye out. Um, and whenever we see something that you know, someone's writing to us and it's not just like an automated tweet um, with our kind of handle in there, we, uh, we call out our, our video team and they, they get to work. But uh, and this is any time of day. So it could be late at night. Like there's been times where it's like Sunday at midnight. I, I send a text to our video producer and like, I'm like, can we get one going right now? And you know, it, people love it. Does your video team love it? I think so. I think, <laughs> it's, you know, they, you know I, they love video and it's just, they have the freedom to make any type of video they want. And I hope so. It's a good question. I'll ask them, but I'm I'm pretty sure they do. So, what channels are you guys operating in, and are you uh, are you moving at all to some of the channels that maybe are uh, you know more video heavy because of the way that you like to do service? So, it really all started with Twitter. Uh, Twitter was where we saw maybe three years ago when we started this entire program exactly three years um it was we saw a lot of interest or most of our tweets coming in or communication coming in via twitter but for some reason I, i'm still having trouble understanding why um maybe the past year or two more of the social interaction for next diva comes via facebook and therefore a lot of our video communication and posts and replies happen on facebook and we treat it the same way. We, we try to get the video out as soon as possible, build that bond and bring a smile to someone's face. And you mentioned that the videos are personalized and you put them on YouTube. Are there, do you ever have a reason to reuse them? Like if somebody's asking, uh, you know, I don't know how to configure the software on my phone or something, do you create a video that then is purposefully, you know, placed into an FAQ somewhere or anything like that? No, we make a new one. If you <laughs> ask, even if it's something that's repetitive, we'll make a new one. I mean, just because it's the first time you're asking us, Dan. So we're gonna we're gonna come back and 
you know, make a video explaining it to you. Again, it's not scalable. Most companies would be afraid and say, oh, it's, it's not possible. But again, I, I highly recommend it. You just got to give it a shot. Try it on a few occasions and you'll get home. I love the idea. I wonder, and this is where I don't know much about the, the cloud communications business, so I'd like to hear your perspective on this. Is it a higher margin business? Is, is, it, is it somewhere where um, the, the benefit of winning that single customer or retaining that customer is much bigger than, say, in a CPG type model? Like, is it, is it something that for your industry is, is a better fit? Or uh, You know, it's to us, we, we rarely look at the customer size when they're reaching out to us. So like we you know, discussed earlier, we have businesses of all sizes using Nextiva. One man, one woman, entrepreneur, just you know, one office, one phone line, all the way up to a corporation with you know, 10,000 plus phones. Mm -hmm. And regardless of who's tweeting, we're gonna reply um, with a video as soon as possible. And we're not necessarily looking at the customer profile and saying, hey, this is a you know, high paying customer. Let's, mm -hmm. let's give them extra love. It's none of that. You know, everyone's important. Let's, let's get out and kick ass. I think I was asking more less about like customer by customer because I agree that can get really blurry. Like right. if you're a mid-sized customer and you don't get a video, I mean more your your industry as a whole is it typically a higher margin business where with with the lower volume of of incoming social as you've said and with maybe potentially higher margins that makes more sense than say if you're in the airline business where we know the margins are notoriously thin and the volumes are notoriously high. That might be a harder sell. So I was just trying to, and I don't know if, if your margins are high in your industry. I don't know much about it. That's what I think I'm trying to understand. Like, is, is it a, a your customers, with, you know, regardless of size, obviously, because the smaller ones, I'm sure, are slightly less work than the bigger ones. Does the cost of the product and the work that you guys have to put in give you the margin to do that extra level of no, cost? No, it's not really, I mean, a, a high margin product whatsoever. There's really um, your culture then. It's just your, your guys. It, so, it's in our DNA to provide a great, amazing customer experience. It, so whether it's you know making like airline margins or you know, the, in our case even the small margins, but it's delivering an amazing experience and making it that kind of that personal touch that can build that brand loyalty. Um, it's not, yeah. It, but on one hand, I, I would say. Obviously, we don't get as many inquiries in a day as maybe an airline would. And as an airline, it would be challenging, but it would just mean you just need to staff appropriately. Um, I, 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 I still have a tough time accepting any argument against it. Yeah. Because there really is. I, I mean, I, I love it. I, I think that the humanity side of it is amazing, but it's so funny because most people that we have on here are walking that line between humanity and, and efficiencies and scale. I think you might be the first person that's just point blank said, even if we've solved that problem before, we're not going to do content. We're going we're to do it again because Dan, it's the first time that you've asked us. And I mean, that makes a ton of sense to me, but it's just, it, from an economics perspective, it's just an interesting um, human problem to wrap your head around. I love yeah. it though. Some of it roots from, I think the, the company DNA of, you know, there's so many options when it comes to telecom and business communication services. And you know, telecom's notorious for those bad experiences. We we're just we're so passionate about what we're doing. And again, it doesn't make sense, but we're gonna do our best to show that we're real people. We're not you know, gonna nickel and dime you. We're not you know, the traditional telecom that's you know out there just to, to you know make their pockets fatter. But we're really there for the for the business and uh, to make sure that our customers are happy. And again, it's not scalable, but it's worth it. Well, so you've said it's not scalable a couple of times, but clearly your company plans to grow. So what, what's the game plan? So, I mean, you know, we, we started with a video production team, one guy, and now it's two. And again, it's not like the T-Mobile where we just heard, you know, it's a team of 100 plus. So um, there's, there's no question that is. is as the requests come in, we're going to continue to reply to them. And if it means putting a project back to, to, to really prioritize and handle a social media request, we'll do that. Uh, but as, as the requests come in, we'll take them on and we'll, we'll prioritize accordingly. But it's, 
something that we've become really passionate about and we're going to stick to. Um, I'm interested, so video, and Dan, I'm sure your head's going here as well. Um, so, you, you know, largely Facebook and Twitter sharing to YouTube, linking out to it. As things like Blab, Snapchat, Periscope, as, as these live streaming type platforms become more prevalent, have you got half an eye on that and kind of how this could be a almost like a, a customer service room for you guys? We've been thinking about it, but we haven't come up with anything that, I mean, if you guys have ideas or have heard of something, I'm also open to it, but in particular, Periscope or, or Snapchat, like still trying to trying to figure out where our place is. Mm -hmm. You and half the world, I think, or more than half the world, ninety nine percent of the world, I think. So we're talking with uh, Yaniv Mezjedi, who is the vice president of marketing for Nextiva, and um, we heard about you, Yaniv, um, from uh, Micah Solomon, who is a customer service guru and uh, writes a lot for Forbes. Uh, and so we really appreciate him recommending you guys. Uh, terrific recommendation. Um, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, maybe some memorable experiences that you've had uh, with customers. Um, certainly since you're shooting video, I'm guessing that that's a lot of fun and you probably have a lot of them, but it is, it is a business to business relationship. So, um, tell us a couple that, that stick out to you. Yeah. The first one that comes to mind is, um, a while back we had a, like a recording studio in Brooklyn, um, just, you know, sh pretty much just shout out next Eva about how they're happy about their next Eva phone service. So we saw that tweet come in. Um, we immediately got one of the guys in our office that you know, is an aspiring musician, um, loves to freestyle rap, and we got him to do a freestyle rap about that business customer um, right on the spot. Just got the camera in front of him, told him to just you know thank the customer back with a freestyle rap. He did it. Um, we posted it right away, and literally within less than an hour, the customer replied back to us with his own rap about Nexiva, which was, which was pretty fun. Um, there's a case in the case with Micah Solomon where it was a customer uh, that wanted to use Nexiva in Germany. And we replied uh, as quickly as possible saying that, you know, we, we don't yet serve the German market. There's interest. We'll definitely let them know when we're ready to serve you know, Germany. He, uh, he obviously shared the the video, but then wrote a, a really nice medium post, medium blog post about you know his experience with Nextiva. And there's many others where it's just people um, you know, thanking us, especially just you know replying back and saying, "Hey, you guys are awesome." But uh, you know, it's it's fun. It, it, it's nice to, and it's really just that one to one connection with that customer that you know you really can achieve with text or an email or a phone call. Well, if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing the uh, the wrap with us, we'd love to uh, append it on the write up uh, and link to it. Uh, I'd certainly love. I thought you wanted me to wrap because I, I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a little guitar solo if you want. Cool. Um, so the, the, the other the other question we like to ask all of our guests, you need, along with um, the memorable encounters one, is just one about you know most people that are that are, that are you know doing what you're doing have kind of stumbled into this, right? Like you, you probably tried a video, saw that it really worked, and kind of kept doing it. It probably wasn't. You didn't go to college to learn how to do social care well. Um, I'd I always ask, like, what have you learned in the last, you've been there since 2008, so what have you learned in the last uh, eight years that you've kind of been doing this and playing around in the space that you wish you knew about social customer care eight years ago? If you could talk to your younger self, what would you share? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is I wish we had embraced video earlier. And, I mean, this we really started embracing it in 2013 we could have done it earlier and I think that w would have been something great for us because uh, really this whole idea of social uh, customer service via video really came about from a concept that we had at next TV called next TV which is a weekly SNL style TV show we have at next TV that's uh, updates, news, internal communication about what's going on at Nextiva via video. 
And we've really grown to embrace video tremendously in the past three years at Nextiva. Of course, I wish we could have done that earlier. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, well, Yaniv, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Really interesting business, and uh, and you know you are the first company that we've talked to that is relying almost solely on video uh, for response, which I think is really cool um, and probably unexpected in your in your industry. So I think that's great. Um, that uh, is going to wrap for us on uh, episode 29 on the Focus of Customer Service podcast. I want to remind all of our listeners uh, to please tweet at us using the hashtag FOCS. It stands for Focus on Customer Service. And let us know, like Micah Solomon did, uh, about brands that are doing a great job um, on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, wherever, anywhere in social, uh, we're interested in talking to them if you have had a good uh, service engagement with them. And we hope you'll join us uh, for our next episode, the 3 I can't believe we're turning 30. Um, but uh, for, for uh, Dan Moriarty uh, and uh, Yaniv, we appreciate you joining us, but we'll see you all next time. Thanks, Yaniv. That was great. Thanks.